Yo, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is the one and only, the true and living legend, Hancho J23, coming to you live with another very special edition of Independent Scene Podcast. It is my honor and my delight to be with you guys once again on this Monday. Hope everybody is enjoying their Monday. Um, I want to give a quick couple of shout outs real quick before I bring my guest in. I want to bring I want to give a quick shout out to my brand new co-host, LaQuinn Brown. For those of you that know her as Quinn, I want to give a shout out to her. I want to also give a personal shout out to my personal DJ, DJ Wade Banner. You know what I'm saying? I definitely want to give, also want to give a shout out to my assistant, Judea Morris. I want to give a shout out to her. Um, and to the rest of the whole in the pot, in, in the pot, in, independent scene podcast family, I want to thank y'all for joining me and being with me and rocking with me this whole entire journey. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, this is a very special edition. Welcome to it. I hope that you guys are ready because today's guest is going to be a dope guest. Um, I definitely have had talks with this artist for, I mean, I've had talks off and on with this artist so i definitely can chop it up with them again so with that being said ladies and gentlemen i ask that you please welcome my guests at this time brivy let's get it <clears throat> yo what's good what's good what's good yo what's up bro how you cool man how you doing i'm all good bro i'm blessed man that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, first of all, let me say welcome to the platform. You know, I think this may be what, like your second time being on the platform? Honestly, bro, I want to say this is my first, but uh, I have spoke with you in person before. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I, well, most definitely, well, like I said, definitely welcome to the platform. You know, before I, before we get started, like to always let my guests know, feel free to be yourself, express yourself how you see fit. Speak how you see fit. Don't hesitate. Don't hold back. All the good stuff. Just be you. Be your authentic you. You know what I'm saying? For sure. I respect most, that. Most definitely. And then, and then also, if you can, introduce yourself to these fine people. For people that don't know you, then we're going to jump right into it. All right, man. First of all, my name is Breezy. I'm an artist out here from Henderson, North Carolina, the 252. You can follow me right there where you see it. That's at underscore Breezy on all platforms, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, anywhere you could think of. That's me, man. Most definitely, most definitely. All right, all right. So first things first. Now, you know, you and I, we've, like you, like you said, we've had, you know, we've talked before, you know, we've met each other before, you know, and and every time I see you, I always have, like, this cool, you know, laid back, chill, you know, vibe about yourself. How did, how did, how did you get to that point of being so chill and so relaxed and just, you know, just in your, just in your zone? Like, how did it come about? Honestly, man, it's just, I'm I'm very uh, I'm an observative person. You know what I mean? Like I I don't really speak a whole lot. I speak when it's time, but I observe more than I speak. You know what I mean? So okay. I try to peep out my environment. I do peep out people before I speak to them. That way I can pick up on the energy of the room, and I just go from there. Okay, okay. Now let me ask you. So you know, now getting into the music side of things, when did you get started, and where did it all start for you? Okay, so <clears throat> a quick little story. When I was like first, right at seven years old, first, um, where it started getting serious for me, where I realized like, hey, I probably want to do this for the rest of my life. I was 12 years old and in middle school, they had like a step show and they was, you know, asking students who wanted to come perform at the step show. So I took on like this little halftime thing at one of the step shows. One of my teachers let me rap. And at the time, I had my sister singing back up for me, you feel me? So I just go in there, I do my thing, man. It was a Friday. I come back to school on a Monday. I received so much love after that. Like, I had girls, like, coming up to me, screaming my name, trying to talk to me. Everybody's trying to be cool with me. At that yeah. moment, I realized, like, rapping, rapping really got the potential to change my life. That's what I want to do forever, so. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> so who are, who are some of those influences, like, who did you grow up watching or listening to that kind of really got you th that deep into this industry, into this hip-hop world? Well, first, it would be, honestly, my parents, my mother and my stepfather. Um, I grew up in a religious household, so both of, both of those people I just mentioned are gospel singers. Um, so I started out playing instruments with them in their group. Um, so that's how I originally started. Um... Everybody in my family pretty much do music, but the first person in the industry that I could honestly say had the biggest impact on me would be J. Cole. I was in sixth grade when his song Workout first dropped, and 
ever since I heard that song, it just ignited something in me. So him most definitely. Okay. 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 I feel that. I feel that. So, you know, look, you know, considering that you're in this industry and you're, you know, you're steady evolving, you're steady learning more and more every day about yourself. Like what's been one of those lessons that you've learned, not only about owning your craft and being the artist that you are, but knowing how to stay focused on the mission at hand. Like, what is that like for you? Honestly, it's something that I'm still learning because I haven't, I haven't really figured out all the pieces yet. I just I make I make a lot of mistakes still to this day. Like I don't I don't got it all together, but I try something. If it don't work, I go back to square one, draw something up again, try something again. So I say it's never something that I figured out yet. I haven't figured out my path yet. I'm still just learning as I go. Okay, okay, I feel that. I feel that. So now, you know, when you think about the landscape, you know, the landscape is is always changing. You know, we have so many up and coming artists. You know, that's you know, that's trying to get their start, their rise in this industry. Like, what are some of those things that you could tell the next person to, you know, get them involved in the game? Like, are you are you referring to like tips and advice on how to become an upcoming artist? Yeah, for for all the for all the up and coming people that's coming up. Okay, <clears throat> first I would say find your own sound. You know what I mean? Like, find something that works for you. Everybody ain't a mumble rapper. Everybody ain't a lyrical rapper. You know what I mean? Find something that works for you. Don't try to really fit into no genre. Be an artist. You don't have to just be a rapper. You don't got to just be a singer. Be an artist. Create. You know what I mean? Um, be into different types of music. When you're into different genres of music, it helps your artistry. Rap music ain't the only thing that can influence the mind. You got jazz music, R&B, classical. Do those things. Um, what else? I also would tell people, stay in your own lane. And don't compare yourself to other people as well. You know, whatever is going to happen for you is going to happen for you. So you don't got to go spending all your bread into this place. Divvy it out a little bit. You know, make it work for your lifestyle. Okay. Okay. Now, I want to I wanna address the name Brivy. Yeah. How did, you, how did that name come about? Talk to us about that. Honestly, it's something I just created for real. Like, at first... I was going by Breed a Rapper. Like, I had so many rap names, like, from when I was a little girl to now. I had so many. But I wanted something short, and I wanted something with one word. You know what I mean? Kind of mm. like, you know how Beyonce just got Beyonce. It's just right. one word, and it's just there. I wanted right. something to kind of appeal towards that. So I just took the first part of my name, Bree. I added the V-E-Y on the end, and it was just Bree. That was it. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. I feel that. I feel that. So let me ask you, how do you feel about the other women out here that are taking over the game? You know, because there are so many, you know, that is proven and shown on a day to day basis that even though this has been a male dominated, you know, thing yeah. that fem the women have out here are really taking the taking the bull by the horns and running. Like, how do you feel about that? Being a part of that? <clears throat> um, I feel I feel good about it. You know, because I'm glad that women are starting to step in more dominant positions and they starting to do their thing. But honestly, I feel like I feel like it's something that women always have did. They just haven't really always get the recognition that they needed for it. You know what I mean? Like a lot of women rap underground. Um, so for now to have women, especially masculine women such as myself, into into the music industry. I think it's definitely gonna shake something up for sure. But I'm just happy for all the women. I'm proud of them for sure. Um, we just got to keep going. We just got to keep putting one foot in front of the other and just letting people know that, hey, we can do it too. Most definitely, most definitely. Now, so the next I want to I want to touch on, you know, that being the LGBT community. You know, there are there are there are a lot of LGBT community artists that you know that are that have out and been out. You know, that have been performing yeah. and, and have been performing doing their thing. But what I want to know is why is there so much stigma against the community? you know, who are singers, who are rappers, who are, you know, engineers and producers, things of that nature. Like, why is there so much stigma against the community? Um, I kind of got two responses towards that. Um, something I want to just clarify up a little bit um, for the people that's watching. Me personally, I can't speak for other people, but me personally, I don't identify as an LGBTQ artist or, you know, I try not to attach those labels to my music. You know what I mean? My music... <laughs> music it's kind of like i can't i can't just be a black rapper or a female rapper or a lesbian rapper like i'm just a rapper you feel me um so that's the first thing 
also it was always people in the industry who had that label on them such as tyra b um amanda perez it's always been there it's just been underneath the surface you know what i mean they wasn't really getting the recognition that they needed and i feel like now with the generation now we just we just don't care no more so we just going out and we just getting everything that we want you know that's also why you got people like Lil Nas x that's running the industry and i and i commend him because he's doing an amazing job you know what i mean but we've always been here we just now getting noticed most definitely. Now I'm glad you brought that up because I was I was gonna ask you about that. You know, Lil Nas X himself, like you just mentioned, yeah, you know, he's really been you know, really showcasing, you know, for the community and really putting it on out there. So, you know, when you see somebody like Lil Nas X, you know, what is one of the things that you possibly may think about or come? What comes to mind when you see an artist like that on that kind of level? You know, really breaking barriers and showing that you know this is me, this is who I am, and I'm going to continue to be me. Like, how does that make you feel as an artist? You know what I'm saying? Honestly, it makes me feel that, again, whatever a person has set for their life is going to happen regardless of who or what they are. Like, you can't stop what's meant for you. And that lane just was meant for him like it was meant for Young and May. You can't stop it. You know, no matter what we try to do, whatever is meant. But I will say... um, it's still a little barrier to a certain extent, even though Lil Nas X is a rapper, he still fits into that genre of pop artist. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He kind of did, because he is the way that he is, he kind of did have to take a turn with his music and push more towards that audience than I would say the hip hop community. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, someone, you know, like that or like me, whatever the case may be, for them to just go up that high in rank in just the hip hop industry, I do feel like it would be a little bit more challenging because it's not as acceptable as pop music. Um, but it's a start, you know what I mean? I feel that, I feel that. Yeah. All right, let me ask you this. So when, it, so when it comes to the genres of music, you know, we have so many genres, you know, and for you growing up, what was that, what was that genre like for you? Was it always, was it, was it always hip hop? Or did you have different? Did you have other genres that you that you like listening to? Like, I mean, what was what was the what was uh, what was your, what was your choice? Your pick of choice when it came to the genre of music? Um, honestly, like I said, I started off playing with my parents in church, so my first love would have been gospel music. You know what I mean? That's that's the that's the main kind of music that influenced me the most. That's the reason why I'm here today. First thing I learned how to play gospel music. Um, but over the years, I've definitely been inspired by R&B, pop, country. I love country music. I'll be honest. The genre that I listen to the least is hip-hop. That's, that's the one that I listen to the least. And, and I'm a hip-hop artist. But I, I don't, I'm not influenced by a lot of hip-hop culture. I'm really not. You know what I mean? Like, I, I consider myself an artist. So to be an artist, I have to see art. I have to see illustration. And hip-hop can't suffice that for all around. You know what I mean? You need other stuff to help you. I feel that. So that so that takes me to my question. I was, I was getting ready to ask you, how important is it to not only own your craft as an artist, but to always stay true to the game, as they say? How important is that? Very important. <clears throat> it's very, very important. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you another story, too. When I was 15, and not to call these people, I won't even name drop, nothing like that. But <clears throat> when I was 15 years old, I actually got offered my first record deal. And it, and it was, it was, it was fun. It won't no chump change either. It, it was something that, that had the potential to change my life overnight. I got okay. offered. But when I went down there and I had the audition for the A&R and stuff like that, you know what they said to me? They said, you know, you're a 15 year old girl and you're rapping beyond your age. I can't market you. We can't market you. We don't have an audience to market you for because you're 15, but you're rapping past people that's your age. Right. So we push you more towards Disney Channel. We want to push you more towards this, that, and the third. But you know, I'm coming up there like this, you feel me? So that in Disney Channel, you know, it don't go neck and neck, right? right? So I actually had to turn the record deal down because I wasn't really, I wasn't trying to pretty much to submit to what they wanted me to do. You know what I mean? It's like, nah, I can't change who I am. Like, I can't fake it. The words that's coming out of my mouth is meant to come out that way, whether I'm 15 or not. So right. I can't. So <clears throat> pretty much I say all that to say, stand true to yourself is probably 
the biggest thing you need in this whole game. You got to stay true to yourself. Like, you can't sell out for money. But that don't mean that you can't grow. So also at the same time, don't turn down everything because you're trying to be the same person. It's all right to grow, but make sure that you're growing in the right direction, you know? Okay. I feel that. I respect that. I respect yeah. that. So, so let me ask you this. You know, when you know you as the artist and you on a personal level, are there any similarities or traits between your per between your per between your between your main self and then your artist self? Is there, yeah. is there is there a difference between the two? It's the same person. I promise you. It's it's the same person. Um, yeah, it's pretty much the same person. It's just that my identity as a rapper, Breezy, right? Mm -hmm. Breezy can see things through other people's eyes. Okay. I, I can too personally. But it's not my place to speak on it personally. It's okay. my place to express those things as an artist. You know what I mean? So okay. in person, we just have a goal. We just go a different way about addressing the things around us. That's it. Okay. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. So let me ask you this. How how has it been, you know, now how has it been for you to to know that you're able to put out your music and so many people are rocking with it? You know, they're you know, they're supporting you know, like, what is that feeling like for you to know that you have that support, you know, behind your music, you know, behind, you know, all of the projects that you may that you may have dropped or have or have or haven't dropped yet? Like, what yeah. is that support like for you? Man, it's just humble beginnings. For real, for real. Like, people really support me. And sometimes I think more people support me than I actually realize sometimes. Like, sometimes it could be like, dang, like, ain't nobody really woo woo woo. But then I might get a message in the middle of the night. Somebody might have my song playing in their car, or I might be driving down the road and I hear somebody playing it. You know what I mean? So it made me feel real good on the inside, um, especially from my hometown where I'm from. Even though I reside in Henderson and I've been here for years, but I am a Warren County native, which is so. <clears throat> With it being 20 minutes up the road, them people in the county, they really, really support me. Like, they really love me. Not even just as a rapper, but I also do art. Like, I do street art. So I've painted murals in my hometown. You know what I mean? So they support me okay. all the I feel that. Okay, that's what's up. I, I, I actually, that's, that's lit. That's lit as hell. Okay. So, so to that point, you know, 252, being from Henderson. Yeah. yeah um. You know, I've seen what y'all have. I've, I've seen some of the heat and pressure that y'all been able to bring, and I've always been impressed. Like I literally have been impressed with some of y'all that come from the two five two. So, let me ask you this: what what is what is the reaction that you get knowing that you're a two five two artist, right? But you going in, but you're going to other cities, other areas, and performing and bringing your mm -hmm. and, all and bringing all of what you got from Henderson from the two five to another to another area like what is that like for you man i ain't gonna lie it can be a good thing but it can also be a bad thing too because i realize like when people they don't okay if you're not from this area you probably hear about this area a lot you know what i mean mm -hmm. so if i go somewhere that's not around here and people don't know me i got one time to be like hey i'm from the 252 and i feel like sometimes it could be immediate beef or it could be immediate you know, tension between me and the audience, especially when I'm trying to connect to them because they know where I'm from. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. so that can that can have a negative impact on it. But at the same time, I have realized also in the craziest way by me being from the 252, it gave me a lot of respect for some reason. Like people just naturally, they naturally just vibe with us. You know what I mean? It's just something about our people down here that they naturally just, you know, really enjoy. Okay. Okay. Now let me ask you this. Last night we had the 2022 BET Awards. I don't know if you had a chance to catch some of the highlights, some of the some the or the, the entire show, but yeah. I want to I want to get your thoughts on it because you know anytime BET Awards roll around, it's always about the black excellence. It's always about you know the the you know the new up and coming artists. You know the the artists that's already before us. Like, what is your thoughts on you know ha you know an award show like that? With, that has that is dedicated strictly you know for us like what is your thoughts on that um honestly i ain't gonna lie i didn't watch though the bt wars i haven't had a chance to watch it this year so i don't really know what happened who did what 
Blue. Um, I just, I based off of past BET experiences, though, I guess the only thing I have to say about that is that I want to see more from them. You know what I mean? Like, I want I want to see a lot more. Like, if you're talking about, that's black television. It's just so much to offer than just that, you know. But I'm just <laughs> there right there. Okay, I feel that. I feel that. All right, so now, well, let me let me switch to let me switch to another preference. You know, we have you know we've been having a, a lot of versus battles going down. Yeah, and I want to get your thoughts on I want to get your thoughts on that. We recently just had a Marion versus Mario. I don't know if you you know had a chance. I, to... A little bit. Okay. So, so, bit. so so to that, I want to get your thoughts on it. Let's talk about it because you know you got two. You, I mean, granted, you got two great artists. You got a Marion, then you got Mario. So. You know, what was your take on the whole Omarion versus Omarion versus Mario beef battle, should I say? There you go. My bad. Something had happened with my connection. No, you good, you good. But um for the whole versus series in general, I'ma say I, I understand they do a hit for hit. You know what I mean? Who had the better hit, whatever the case may be. And that's fine, like, because statistics speak. You know, you can't lie with the numbers, right? Yeah. But just because you do more numbers don't mean, that don't make you the better artist. You know what right. I mean? It doesn't make you the better vocalist. It don't make you the better rapper. It doesn't make you better than that person. You just did more statistically. So I feel like it's good if we if we want to talk about the work that people put in. Like, yeah, you know. But sometimes, I ain't gonna lie, like, when it go one way, I'd be like, nah, like the other person should have won or whatever the case may be. Um, as far as the whole of Marion and Mario, I mean, it, it was it was just entertaining, honestly. Yeah. Um, neither one are really artists that I really listen to, so I wasn't like, and that's that's out of my era too. Like I'm I'm born in '99, but I grew up in 2000s, baby. So that's kind of out of my era a little bit. So you know, that ain't really my conversation. Okay. Okay, I was trying to feel that. So, okay, so to that point, you know, late 90s, 2000s, I was going to ask you, what era of music right now, and, or at least from that time, do you do you deem as still one of the hottest eras of all time? Do you think the 90s was the most, was the hottest era, or do you think the 2000s was more of the hottest era? Honestly, and it's, it's, I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to honestly say that's hard. But I got I got to be real to a certain extent. I feel like the '90s got so much potential to be the best era of music, only because of like the, if you listen to the actual musical part of it, you know what I mean. Like from the beats, the breakdowns, the harmonies, like it was, you know what I mean. It was something yeah. about it was so concrete. So it has the potential to be the greatest era of all time for real. But the 2000s is what shaped it, man. The 2000s shaped the culture in music in general in a way that I don't feel like no other generation has. So just off that, I'm going to say 2000s. Okay, okay. So let me ask you this. What was it about the 2000s that really changed the game for you, for, for you and for your, from your perspective? Like, what, what, what was it about the 2000s that changed for you? Uh, I don't know, because I feel like, okay, when I was coming up, <clears throat> early 2000s, you know what I mean? Soldier Boy was coming out and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Right. So it's, I didn't really have a chance to kind of see the shift in the music industry a little bit. I didn't have a chance to really experience 90s transforming from the early 2000s. Like when I was coming up, it was just more 2000s and then us hearing about the 90s. You know what I mean? Right. But compared to the early 2000s to where it's at now, um, I feel like social media has played the biggest part on that, for sure. Social mm -hmm. media has played the biggest part on that, for real, for real. It's just, it's made it something completely different than what it was. Most definitely, most definitely. Now, to that, social media, you know, worldwide global phenomenon, as I like to call it, you know, so how has social media helped you or benefited you in any kind of, in, in any way, or if it has benefited you in any way? Um, it's helped me reach an audience that I wouldn't be able to get to physically, especially with, you know, when COVID hit and it first resurfaced and stuff like that. Uh, it just helped me get my name out there without me having to leave the house. Um, you get a chance to connect with people 
that you don't even know for real and they want you they want to see you so it it's easier like it's way easier than passing out mixtapes than going to your corner stores having to sell cds out the trunk of your car it just makes it so much easier when you can just upload a video boom means of people can look at it um i will also say though it does kind of make it challenging a little bit because there's so many people to choose from you know what i mean it's kind of like what are you doing that this person isn't doing because everyone on the internet is doing the same thing. We're all marketing our songs in the same way. We all go into the same shows because everybody knows about it versus back then, you know, you didn't have everybody keeping up with you. It was, you know, you was making all of these moves by yourself and everybody was just in the background because everybody ain't had the money to ride. Woo -woo -woo. Now though, it's more competition. So it's kind of like, even though it's easier to get signed, it's easy to get heard, but you just got to be, you got to be one of the few, you know what I mean? You got to be one of the few to just do it for real. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we, you know, I want to ask this because, you know, when you look at, you know, you, and you mentioned him earlier, you, you know, you mentioned J. Cole, you look yeah. at, people like, you look at people like J. Cole, who has truly, truly revolutionized this industry and yeah. brought, and brought a feel back to hip hop, you know, J. Cole is a storyteller with his music. So my my question to you is, do you see kind of, uh, do you see yourself in that same regards when it comes to the songs that you put out, the projects that you put out? Do you find that your music is also storytelling? For sure. Definitely. I definitely do. Like, one thing I always adored about J. Cole is that he can speak from anybody's perspective. You know what I mean? Like, he can speak from people's perspective, man. And I feel like that's really what, that's what music is all about. That's what rapping is about. Um, me as an artist, I can do that. I can do the same thing. So, yeah. Hell yeah, man. Most definitely. I feel like I got this thing. If not more, though. If not more. Not even on no lyrical, like, compatibility state. But just being able to have empathy towards other people and being able to channel them emotions, most definitely. Most definitely. Now, I want to get your thoughts. And uh, this, you know, this may, as I say, this may seem far fetched, but hypothetically speaking, if right. you was, if you was to ever have an encounter with the one and only J Cole or have a run in with J Cole, what would be your re what would be your response and your reaction to that? Man, I got two things to say on that. <clears throat> My reaction first, I don't know. I don't feel like I'd be starstruck. I feel like I'll just be more humble, he, you know, because he not he not a person that'll make me be like, oh, I'm about to pass out. I'm about to faint and cry. But he's probably more of a person I want to go up to and shake his hand and have a legit conversation with him and allow him to be a mentor to me and 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 share some of those gems and stuff with me. So I feel like I'll be very receptive towards J. Cole for sure. Um, other thing I want to say is that I came this close to having an encounter with J. Cole. Well, actually, twice, twice. I came a little close to having an encounter with him. Uh, the first time is when I actually used to live in Fayetteville um, for quite some time. I was living up there in Fayetteville, and I had a cousin who knows his um, a friend of his at the time. They was real tight and real cool. And she's like, Bree, I, um, I could get you in touch with J. Cole. And I'm like, man, you lying. Like, you lying, you lying. You know yeah. what I mean? And um, she called the guy that she knew right in front of my face, and he called J. Cole. But as soon as he called Cole, Cole pretty much was telling him, like, man, like, I just left from that area. You know what I mean? Like, I just left, whatever. Woo. So that that moment kind of just went. And then um, my girlfriend, her oldest sister actually was in the J. Cole video. They okay. shot a music video right outside her oldest sister's house. So that was just, you know, like little run-ins that it's like, oh, man. Shit be closer than you think. Right, right, right. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so let me ask you this now. Look at, you know, five or ten years from now, what's next for you? Like, what, what, what is next, you know, on your list of things that you want to accomplish in 2022? Um, entrepreneurship. That's one thing I'm really, really learning. I'm learning how to get minds and own minds. Um. I don't believe in handouts. I don't believe in going to look for it no more. I believe in creating the attention and the right attention to come to me. So I'm still in school. I'm currently in trade school. 
Um, so I will be fully licensed in about a year to have a trade in cosmetology barber industry. Um, so that I'm trying to do, uh, I really just want to be an entrepreneur, start my own business, man, get it out the mud, promote my music at the same time and just help other people do that, you know? Okay. Okay. Now, my last three questions I got for you is when it comes to crowd participation, crowd interaction, how important is that when you're out and about and you're performing at shows, you're performing at different events, you know, and you're engaging with the crowd? Like, how important is that for you as an artist? It's super important. It's probably the most important. Engaging with the audience is more important than you trying to promote your song. For real. Because... It's like one thing I always tell people, right? I don't, I don't know if you, 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 I, you've seen me perform before, I believe. I don't know if you caught it at the last minute. Um, but one thing that I do is that I always pick a song that I feel like everybody can relate to as my first song, right? I don't want to go up there with the most hype song and try to get everybody lit because don't nobody know me. Like, right. I'm, if I'm from Henderson and I'm coming to Raleigh and I'm trying to, it's, it's okay, you lit, but. You just another lit person that's coming up here, right? Right. But I can do something like create a moment and engage with you and make you feel what I'm saying. You know me more on a personal level, which means you starting to trust me musically. You know, you'll be more receptive to hearing me and shaking my hand afterwards and being like, yo, I really fuck with that. You know what I mean? Right. So having that intimacy with your audience is very, very important. Like, don't just get in front of people and think it's all about you. At the end of the day, these are the people that's going to carry your career. So you want to make sure that you, you, you touch things in them. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Okay. So my next thing. So if you had a chance to perform on any stage or in any city or state, where would that be? In any city? Yeah. Uh, honestly, I'll go wherever, for real. I ain't picky. But okay. but I guess one city that I do want to perform in, because I feel like it'll just be maybe life-changing, Um, probably L.A. Okay. You okay. know, either L.A. or probably somewhere in New York. I feel like New York will fuck with me. Okay, I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. So, all right, I feel that. So my so my last and final question I got for you real quickly is when it comes to stage when it comes to stages and being on you know whether it be small stages big stages or arena size stages like wh what where do you feel the most comfortable do you do you do you like performing on small stages does it really matter or or would, or do you have a dream of performing in like you know big ass arenas or you know stadiums or whatnot like how do you feel about that. Honestly, I'm cool wherever God send me, bro. Like for real. Um, right now I haven't had the opportunity to be on a big stage like like thousands of people. I have not had the opportunity yet. Um, I love the I love the small shows. It gives me more of a chance to really really interact with people. Um, I feel like it's easier to gain an audience at a small show than it is a big one. You know what I mean? But I hope the one day be on the big stage, man. I'm talking about fucking arenas, like arena type stuff. Like that's what I'm trying to get. Like I'm trying to, I'm not trying to just be an artist or this rapper. I'm trying to be icon status, man. Like that's, that's what I'm trying to get to. So one of these days. Okay. Most definitely. Most definitely. Well, listen, you know, I can, you know, we could talk all that. I definitely could talk to you all day, but I definitely, you know, I have truly enjoyed the conversation. I appreciate you for, you know, tapping in with us and definitely rocking out with us. And um, where can, let people know where they can follow and tap in with you at. For sure. For sure. Um, well, again, you can follow me on everything at underscore Brevy, B-R-I-V-E-Y. Um, I do got a song that I just released on Apple Music. It's on all streaming platforms. It's called Own It. It's also in my description. If you go on my page, it's in my bio. So you can get that song as well. Um, if you want to follow me on Facebook, Brianna Blacknell, B-L-A-C-K-N-A-L-L. -L -L. That's my social media right there. So everything is just on my page if you want to look at me anytime. Most definitely. Most definitely. Well, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this has been my time. I am the one and true living legend on the 23rd Independent Scene Podcast. Special thanks to my special thanks to my guest, Brivy, for stopping through and tapping in with us. Special thanks to all of you that tapped in and chopped it up with us. And special thanks to my 
my co-host who's not with us today, but such thanks to her, such thanks to my my personal DJ DJ Wade Banner, and and for the, and from the rest of the independent independent scene podcast on the we say we say thank you and we appreciate you and we look forward to seeing you guys next time on another edition independent scene podcast we out guys show man thanks for having me for sure